Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Head-Up Guidance System, also known as the HDS, which is the heads-up display available on the PMDG 737. Uh, this little piece of uh, Mardon engineering is really, really cool, and uh, there's a lot of things that it does really, really well, and there's a couple little tricks along the way that we're going to check out, so uh, let's get started. So first things first, if you climb inside your brand new shiny 737 from PMDG, you're going to want to make sure that you load in the heads up display. Now, right now it's uh, sitting up there because I did it earlier. But if for some reason it's not sitting up there, you can actually hit the menu button, PMD setup, aircraft, and equipment. Now, the easiest way to do this, of course, is if you hit previous page a few times here, uh, what you're going to notice is all sorts of fun little things in here. And one of the items you're going to notice is uh, there's an HGS installed, and you're also going to notice there's an HGS auto, uh, basically maximum ILS attempt mode three that's also available to you if that's something that you need we also get a little uh, ground reference line you can turn that on or off and it gets a little gauge and everything like that so you're going to want to make sure you check that box to uh, turn that sucker on otherwise uh, you're not going to get to enjoy it nearly as much uh, the second thing we want to keep an eye out for is the actual device itself there's actually two parts to this i would argue there are three parts for this uh, depending on uh, what manual you're reading but basically you have the display unit uh, which is this collimator plate that we have right in front of us we have the little control panel that's actually sitting right down here in the kind of aft avionics bay and there's also a magic box uh, in our massive avionics panel that has all sorts of fun buttons on it that we have no access to now when we're using this tool uh, as a general rule you're going to be having this pretty much left alone although we'll take a look at the different functions in a few moments here and uh, especially when we get up towards landing and of course the display itself is here first problem you're probably going to have is making sure it's where you want to see and if you actually put your head up a little bit higher you'll notice that they didn't do a perfect job of capturing where it is in the glass uh, the other thing you're going to notice is if your head's kind of high and you zoom out you can actually escape the side and of course if you come here and you zoom in a little bit it's actually a little bit easier to see the actual display now if you're in um virtual reality this is a little bit simpler to set your head up here but the cool thing that you need to know about this is uh, just kind of getting yourself where you want to be able to see it of course if you look your head around you'll notice the heads-up display information stays in the same place however when you move your head around that's when all the stuff in the actual heads-up display starts moving around with you so it's just something you want to be always mindful of so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the basic functionality and then uh, we'll get to landing where it kind of gets more interesting Basically, this is how this works. You'll notice there's a standby button, a mode button, a runway button, and a glide slope button. The mode button is the current mode we have selected. The standby is the expected next mode we want to be in. For example, we're in what they call primary mode, which uh, the best way to describe primary mode is if you took this and you shove this here, you're looking at primary mode. But you'll notice our standby mode here is actually IMC. Now, if I click on the mode button, what will happen is this IMC mode will become the active mode. So if I press mode now, do you see how it jumped up here? Now, if you look out here, you'll notice that the information has been significantly reduced here to make it a little bit easier when you're flying in IMC conditions. So this is anything but IMC conditions. It's pretty nice. Now, if I were to press this again, it would go from IMC mode to VMC mode. So if I press that right there, you'll notice if I flip back up here, this is again going to be this particular mode ready to go for us. And you can see how when we did that, oh, my bad. Let me actually switch this over. Over. Helps when I actually push the button correctly here. I'm going to set that to VMC. Boop, and now we're VMC. Thank you. Push the wrong button. Sorry. All right, so coming up here, you can see we're in that visual VMC mode. Now, where it gets interesting is, uh, let's say we're coming in for a landing, and uh, the current mode that we want to be in is we want to be in IMC mode. And what we want to do is we're going to pop it over here. We want this to switch to category three for an ILS landing. So I can press this button a few times and have that ready to rock. Now, the reason that's so useful is remember we have auto arm, by the way. So when we actually get onto the ILS, it'll switch for us. But if we want to quickly do that, we can just reach down there and tap that button and that'll immediately trigger that particular a one, two, three mode that we have right here. So that works pretty well. And um, of course you're asking what mode should you steep this thing in? Oh, it depends on you. Uh, generally for me, I like it in primary mode. And as a backup, a lot of times it'll do is I'll do one of these kind of pieces right here. Now, you're going to notice there's a couple more buttons down here. Uh, one button, of course, is going to be the one that says RWY. This is referring to the runway length. Uh, now, this is important because this is going to give us a digital representation of the runway. We'll show you that in a minute. And the other thing you're going to see is a glide slope override. If you're flying into Hartford, Connecticut, for example, and you want to come in really, really steep, you can actually come in here and adjust this. To use this, it's really, really simple. All you're simply going to do is press the runway button, and it's going to give you the length of the runway. Now, if this, of course, were the runway we were actually on, we'd come in here. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind, uh, when you are dialing in runway information is you really have to come by and press the enter key now there's another piece of runway information we can do if we press the runway button again and that's going to be the elevation now i know we happen to be at 40 feet so if i press enter now we have both the length 
and we have our elevation ready. If I press this, you can see this is now ready to go. We're not landing at this front where we're taking off, and certain versions of this Collins device actually has a special takeoff mode, uh, which we don't unfortunately have access to here, but um, that's how you would basically get that set up. So let's get this thing in the air and uh, get us all kind of queued up and uh, kind of take a look at what it looks like once we get going. All right, so we're just now settling into our cruise altitude here. Everything is uh, looking pretty good. We're currently in the primary mode. Uh, like I said, the primary mode kind of gives us all the critical information all in one place. It really is just a copy of our little tool down here, our primary flight display. Now, there's a couple different things here. Uh, you'll notice down here at the bottom, we've got a little kind of heading indicator, just like we have down below. We have a vertical speed indication. We have our little altitude tape sitting here on the right. I'll zoom in nice and far. We have our little mock indication down here. We have our airspeed indicator. We have the currently armed mode. In this case, we're in A3 mode here you can see what modes our autopilots are on across the top we're in fmc speed lateral navigation vertical navigation of course command not cws you can see our angle of attack right now is 3.4 units and uh, from our little flight path vector we're looking pretty cool uh, one of the things that people miss on this particular one is this little tiny little carrot here uh, this carrot basically tells you how fast you're traveling relative to the selected speed uh, one of the things you'll see here very clearly is uh, my selected speed um we're a little bit below you uh, know you can actually watch as this little carrot will actually sort of hike downwards and this is a really really good tool for landing approaches because it gives you a relative idea of what we need to do in order to get where we're going kind of a thing which like i said kind of handy depending on what you actually have set up here of course we have an ils selected in a different mode but that's okay because i will switch to that later on uh, the only other really really big tricky thing i'd say kind of in here is uh, you have your little navigational display which is going to tell you how many nautical miles you have to your next waypoint that you have selected you're also going to have any of your vors displayed and depending on what frequency you have everything is going to become apparent up on this side of the thing we also have your selected altitude on the tops so you also have your selected air speed up there and there which makes it much easier to spot exactly what you're doing so in my case uh, we're going to be getting ready for a landing in a few minutes so i'm going to go ahead and get this all squared away with the desired altitude that i need to come down we're basically going to go right to norwich uh, take a right there but this is a good time to go ahead and take a look at how the display changes uh, when you go to different modes so again i'm going to press mode and you'll see this thing flashes at me mode uh, a1 l1 one it's going to say no and the reason it says no here um, because of the fact that i'm not currently receiving an ils and as a result it's not going to give me that specific display you can actually see this little b here to see my current parametric altitude is just about 10,000 feet here now if i come down here of course and i go ahead and switch this to imc mode which is my next selected mode you can see it simplifies things quite a bit um, we've still got our airspeed visible up here in the upper left corner you can see we still have our altitude our vertical speed our angle of attack all of our autopilot modes are very very clearly listed across the top now switching over to VMC, you'll notice that there's not really a lot of change here. Now, the one thing that we do add, of course, is if you look at the tippy top here, you'll notice now the presence of our little kind of a pitch ladder, which is going to help us out. You also notice the presence of this little wind arrow, which is going to give us an idea of uh, not the most strongest wind that we're experiencing today. But a lot of the other information that you saw displaying in IMC mode are essentially the same. It's just providing us with just a little bit more detail of uh, what we could possibly need to use here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll switch this real quickly back to primary mode again. I'll just press that button again. It was the next one selected, so it opens that one up for us lickety split. We can see that that's looking pretty solid ILS all that's pretty good and of course uh, we have once we do have our ILS all selected in here one two thing I will mention here before we get all set up for a landing is the presence of this little triangle up here uh, this is uh, not the big brother triangle uh, what you actually have here is your slip indicator uh, right now you'll notice that this little guy right here is underneath the triangle which means we have no slip if I were to accidentally uh, kick my left rudder you'll notice that that aircraft uh, actually comes out of coordination now, this is the equivalent of your ball if these two things are aligned the aircraft is not slipping or skidding and this simply means you're basically trying traveling in the direction that you're pointing, at least from a longitudinal kind of a perspective. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward up to the landing. Oh shoot, looks like the weather got a lot more worse up in northern Connecticut than it was over in Providence. Oh boy, we better uh, get planning for this landing. I think things are going to get a little more serious than they were a minute ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go ahead and load up IMC mode. And I'm going to arm my category three landing mode from ILS. Now, the cool thing here is you'll notice a lot of that other information kind of gets stripped away to make it a little bit simpler for us to kind of be able to see. Uh, one thing, by the way, is you have this lovely little adjustment for brightness. So if you find like you get too blurry, you can push this button in, you can actually switch it to manual mode and you can actually adjust the brightness to make it a little bit better, a little bit worse for you depending on kind of what you need. I find this perfectly acceptable. So uh, one of the things we're going to want to do is we're going to enter into our runway information. So uh, we're going to be going to ILS. Uh, it's going to be our approach for runway 
24 and KBDL. And now that's a pretty useful landing for us. It's a nice and long runway. It shouldn't be too hard for us to execute. And if we go ahead and uh, grab this information, let me go pull it up on the desktop so you all can take a look real quick as yourselves. You can see this is roughly what we're doing. We're actually coming in right around here. We got to turn around at Kibby and basically come down for a landing. I'm also noticing that I'm a little high. Uh, we'll have to fix that in a second, but that only takes a moment. But one of the things they provide us for, which is really, really helpful, is our runway landing distance, which is two, I'm sorry, 9509. And we know our TDZE, which is going to be a touchdown zone elevation, is 170 feet. Now, with that information, we can now dial that in to our computer. So let's go ahead and float back down here. I'm in IMC mode. This is the way I want it. So I'm going to click on the runway button once. It's going to give me my elevation. Click on it again. There it goes. So we're going to go ahead and dial in that information. 9509, enter. So now I'm going to press runway. My elevation, as you saw there a moment ago, is 170. That's going to be the height at that altitude. 170. I'm going to go ahead and press the enter key one more time. So now everything has been programmed, and I'm now ready to rock. Uh, our glide slope angle here is going to be 3 degrees. So we can confirm that visually. Let's see here. 3 degrees, 3 degrees, confirming it. Uh, 3 degrees, yes. Uh, we're looking at 3 degrees exactly. TCH71. So that actually looks pretty good to me. Come over here. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this altitude just a tiny bit. So now what we're doing, uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can all see this disaster of an approach we're setting up here, is we're basically doing our procedure turn here, uh, kind of uh, going around here. It's giving a screaming at me right now saying, you didn't pick what you wanted to do for landing. Got you, my friend. Got you, no problem. And one other thing I'm going to do while I'm in here too is I'm just going to confirm Kibby, Searle, Motel, Runway 24. Everything looks uh, very, very nice for that. Pretty cool. So now we're going to finish up our little procedure turn here and it's uh, going to line us up with our ILS. Uh, one of the nice things we can do, of course, is uh, we can cheat a little here. And uh, once we come around this corner, we can actually arm the approach. And we'll show you kind of what happens visually when we do that step. Anybody feel like we're turning right a lot? <laughs> Oh boy, I like how I have the big holding pattern here too, but fortunately the holding pattern was not selected, so we don't have to worry about that. Lucky us, lucky us, as they say. There's Kibby right there, and now uh, we've also, uh, we've got to lose a little bit of altitude here. I'm actually going to reduce my speed a little bit, so we're kind of high. One of the cool things I can do here is I can just press vertical speed, and I can just override it. I'm going to come down by about 1,000 feet to 2,100. 2,500. And the advantage to this, of course, uh, there's my radar altimeter. I'll get that all pre-programmed as well. We'll do our mins. Let's see here. Whoa. Our mins right now. I don't want to be in barometric in mins. I want to be radio mins. There we go. And then we're just going to dial that into the standard minimums here. ILS uh, 200. So we're looking for a 200. This is also going to be nice for us when we get onto the heads up display in a second. See 177, 181, 191, 195, 200 feet. Delightful. So if you take a look now, uh, you can see that we're still in IMC mode and we currently have A3 arm mode activated. We're coming around here. We're not on the ILS just yet. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm actually going to press the APP button. And what that's going to do is that's going to arm our approach. Uh, you can see actually at the top that we're VOR lock mode, which makes sense. It's also screaming at us that we're only single channel, but that's okay. We'll fix that when we get a little bit closer. Coming around for our landing here. Come on down. We can take a pretty good look here. We can see that is our localizer, and there's our glide slope. You can see we have captured just the localizer for now. You know, we're still working on the glide slope at this point, and we're distanced about 13.9 nautical miles out. So what I'll do here is I'll speed up time a little bit more. You can actually just make out the runway in the distance here. Good old acceleration. Doesn't make your life easier. Looks like we have a bit of a crosswind too, as we always do. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we're doing. We haven't started making the march downward here. I'll go ahead and speed up time one more time. All right, here's the fun part. So we're going to be hitting Motel, and you can actually watch the glide slope start to hike downwards. Go ahead and slow down time, and there is our glide slope. Go ahead and get ready for our landing. You know, the engine cycling up, and we're going to start reducing this to our approach speed. Oh, perfect. So now you're going to see a lot of things happen at once, uh, which is uh, going to be very much in our favor, kind of a thing like that. So I'll make sure the approach mode is armed. Looks good to me. I think we're still waiting. If we have captured our glide slope, we've also captured our localizer. We're starting to slow down. Everything is indicated up top, which looks good to us. 
And now the cool thing is, is this is one of the great things about a heads up display is now you got this great little display here of the flight path vector. You have the three degree glide slope line right here. And you also have the orientation of our actual physical approach uh, coming down to the ground. And you can see here, this thin line is going to be our localizer, which is lined up with the runway. And you can also see here, which is uh, basically our glide slope line. And you can see how we're just a little off. Uh, not too bad though, not too bad. Start bringing in the rest of the flaps. Now, the interesting thing is, if we were to come down here and press this, we're going to get a warning message saying no A3. Now, the reason for that is that is not something that we have on this particular approach. Now, this is a conventional approach. So unfortunately, we don't get the benefit of that. But we can still get the regular IMC display that you're seeing here. All right, bringing in the last bit of flaps. If we were to make the weather bad or even worse, there we go. Let's make it a little more interesting. Getting an approach warning. Notice, notice. And there we are. Approaching minimums. And now if you notice really closely, you'll actually see a diagram of the airport itself that is actually sitting here outside of here. Because we took the time to program all the details like the touchdown elevation, as well as some of the other fun stuff, we're actually able to pull off a shot like this where you can see it visually as we come down. 50, 40, 30, 20. Whoops. Yeah, I don't like it. I got it, I got it. Lame landing, lame landing. <laughs> and you can see we come right on down. Enjoy.